Kanchana Gaurangi Radha Vrindavaneshwari Shabhan Sukhade Dhanaman Hari Shishistavali Vrashila Ravunad Dasku Swami Manak Shiksha First Shlok Gurau Gosthe Gosthalaya Sinu Sujane Kusaradane Svamantre Shri Nani Vraja Nava Yiva Kautnanda Sarame Sada Dhanapam Kitva Kuru Pratima Kurvam Atitaram Yasvantam Tatas Satukhi Abhyase Trita Pada O mind, O brother, I hold your feet and I pray to you as a flattering word. All this, give up your pride and develop wonderful love for your spiritual master, the above of Raja. The people of Raja, the saintly devotee, the Brahmanas, my initiation mantra, the holy name of Krishna, and the shelter of eternal beautiful couple of Raja, Shishi Radha Krishna. This book, Stavali, was written by our uh, great jewel of our Vaishnavas, Shiva Raghunanda Swami. He was living on Radha Kund and he was praying daily to Radharani and Radha Kund being Radha Kund. He was crying daily and praying that Radharani would give some service to him. And we have Raghunath Das Goswami Samadhi and Radhakun. So this is the place where he was worshipping him. And he prays to his mind. Because we have our mind and our mind is uh, it's like a separate entity. He addressed him as a separate person, a brother. He called him a brother. Because uh, it's like a relative. Like we may have a brother relative, but not necessarily that our relatives will always follow us and they do what we advise to do. Usually they do something else. So he, he addressed mind as a brother so to indicate that our relative is not always following us and we are related, but they can do something else. So our mind something else. So we are as a consciousness, as a, um, as a soul, we have a consciousness and until we know our spiritual identity we, we don't know who we are. So but we have this mind which is like a separate person which doing something what he thinks appropriate, what's practical, what's logical. Mind operates on the logic mind operates on practical he doesn't know about love and prayer so mind is just trying to maintain this body and trying to satisfy the senses so Raghunath Daza Swami he uh, decided to offer him a prayer to pray to mind it's a, it's a one uh, way to respect the mind because it is creation of the God. So we, we should respect our mind because it is creation of God. And he prayed, O oh brother, I hold your feet. 
So it is very, um, very much respect. If you hold someone's feet, means you are uh, putting yourself very, very low compared to this person. So our mind, he is also represented of the uh, energy of Maya. So, and if we are trying to be very uh, harsh on it, so it will rebel. So, Raghunath Das Goswami, he chooses not to uh, scream on his mind and uh, scald the mind. He decides to go very humble way and decide to hold the feet of the mind and beg him to uh, do what is our inner desires there. So, our uh, spiritual desires. Because mind, he could be a greatest enemy. Like we may have a different enemies in our life, but one enemy is always very near and very close to so our mind. So if we gonna win the mind and make our relative, at least as a brother, not an enemy, then we can cooperate and work with it together to achieve this, uh, the one goal which we all wanted, our spiritual goal. So he holds the feet of the mind. It's uh, very difficult to imagine how someone can hold the feet of his own mind, but we can try. <laughs> so if we are thinking, it mean, in this yoga he indicated we are not this mind. We are, we are not this body, we are not this mind. We are uh, a spiritual being, which is having a human experience. So we are not this body, not the mind. So we are something else, because how he can say, oh brother, if he thinks it's him himself. So he thinks it's a separate entity, a separate person. So he offers prayers, holding his feet, very humbly. So then he goes on, and I pray to you with flattering words, praying to the mind. So this is a, actually a, a way how we can deal with this situation, that we have a mind and body which is rebellious, which doesn't want to follow. Uh, our uh, our consciousness, our mind wants something, want uh, fulfill the desires. There are so many desires come up every every five seconds. If you write down on the paper all the desires which come up in in just in five minutes, you will be surprised how many desires are coming. Maybe ten, maybe fifteen. So and all these desires, they it's like a mind. He wants they will be uh, fulfilled. So, desire to do something, desire to uh, plan something in the future, desire to eat and sleep and rest and protect the body and money. There's so many desires coming. So, mind generates uh, millions of different desires. Millions of desires, if we actually start putting them in count, that will be millions. So, and because we, we are living together, we want to satisfy the mind, so we want to uh, fulfill the desires. But here is Raghunath Das Goswami, is praying that always give up your pride. The mind, he think of himself, different thing. On different stages of life, mind think, uh, identify itself with something. Like in our childhood, mind can identify us with a, uh, somebody who better than other children and know more and higher than other children. And, and when we grow in the school, mind can identify that I'm a good uh, student and I study very nicely and maybe other doesn't study so nicely. So then we become a parent. The mind is saying, I'm, I'm a great parent and I know what to be a great parent. And it is in different stages of life. There is a different identification with ourselves, who we are. So, as we are a parent, as we are, um, we could be uh, working in different jobs, and we immediately identify ourselves with this person. So, mind is always trying to become a, some kind of persona, and he wants respect. He becomes proud of having some kind of qualities. So that's why uh, Raghunath Das Goswami is saying, I will always give up your pride. He said always, 
means it happened constantly that mind get proud all the time. Something you meet someone and immediately your mind is putting this person like, all right, I, I have this and this quality better, so this person has to learn from me and I am higher than this person. So this is mind thinking like this always. He's always compare white and black, left and right. So compare what is going on around. So he always make judgments. Mind, he creates judgments. And when he creates judgments, he become proud. Mind become proud. So Raghunanda Das Goswami should always give up your pride. Means you should do that continuously all the time. Giving up this idea that we can judge someone on something. Because we don't know the position of anybody around us. Like on the soul level, on the consciousness level, we don't know what relationship this particular person may have with Radha Krishna. Maybe they're very, very close. Maybe this person has uh, uh, so much love. Maybe externally he don't know much and don't know how to say things. But this doesn't matter. Love, it, it not means knowledge. Love is something different. So, and uh, we should be always careful, thinking that the person I am next to may be somebody very, very close to God. And if I start thinking down to this person, I will make an upright. And that will be a... it will jump the whole our spiritual life. Why we cannot actually get the preem right now? The, the Shastra said that even one time you say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 You can get Priyam, but why we don't get? Because we have this mind, brother, <laughs> who thinks himself something that he is, which he is not. He thinks in a different, different mask, he put in different mask. Like, I'm this, I'm that, and become proud. And we get in trouble because of this, that's why we're not getting Priyam. Because this is this is what is the anarchas, what is the apparatus when we are having this pride. So uh, once we give up this pride, then the preem will come. So Raghunath Das Goswami, he knows about this. He not only praying for himself, he's showing to us what is the problem and what is the solution. So what is uh, what we should uh, work with. So distant our mind and pray, take his feet and pray, please give up your pride. Everyone can do in, in their uh, consciousness, they can do that and, and, and they can try and see what happens. Maybe the mind will give up at least for five minutes, right, <laughs> for some time. So we have some uh, uh, other thing we can do at that time, we can actually have uh, thoughts about Radha Krishna because the prideness it's like a background noise, it's always there. So it's not going out, it's just like a, like a background there, always is there, it's bright. So this we should give up and develop wonderful love for your spiritual master. So develop means it takes time, it doesn't go like in a minute, it takes a very long time, sometimes maybe years. The Guru, he testing disciple a year. Then another year he takes to uh, give him his spiritual identity and then it takes many years to know who is Guru. Because to know who is Uttama Dikari, for example, you have to be on the level of Uttama Dikari or Madhyama Dikari to know at least that level. So it takes time for disciple to reach a particular level so he can understand the position of a Guru. Otherwise, he will think of, of him as a knowledgeable person, has uh, qualities, and uh, has more knowledge than me, has some great quality, but never know what is the relationship of Guru with God. This is what is the main thing. Because having a good qualities, having great knowledge, it's not really the main thing. The main thing is what is the relationship between uh, a guru and the god. So that, that knowledge is the most important. So develop wonderful love for your spiritual master.
So, uh, love for spiritual master means, love means service, and real love means selfless service, where you do not want anything in return, you don't have any agenda, it means selfless. That's what it means here, love. So you serve the Guru, but you do not expect anything from the Guru, and you do not have preferences of what he may advise you to do. So that's how you can serve a guru. So always give an option, two or three options to a guru. Left or right, which one? Pick you. You pick where to go, left or right. Guru knows the road out of this uh, dark forest where we stuck and we don't know the way out. So he knows where to turn, left or right. So if we have some kind of our mind and agenda, we're going to try to turn in the wrong place. So we'll never get out of this uh, forest of uh, this. And also we are blind, as he said in Prembhakti uh, Chandrika, we are blind. So we don't even see road. So how we can find a way out? We cannot also. This wonderful love for a spiritual master develop. Wonderful love for a spiritual master. So it, it takes maybe 5, 10, 20 years to develop this love. And to understand that Guru is not just a person who we see, it is a, a spiritual being which has a relationship with God, very, very close relationship. It's like a relative. So, uh, the Guru in uh, our traditional Gaudi Vaishnava line is a, is a Guru Mandri. It is a, a spiritual identity which is uh, very, very high in position, like uh, if uh, Krishna, he addressed uh, Manjri, he addressed them to arrange the rendezvous with Radharani. So, the God creator of everything, he is respectfully asking help from the Guru Manjri. So, this is the position of uh, a Guru. So, to understand and love the Guru, we should see the inner form of the Guru, the inner being, who is the really Guru. This external uh, body, it is also become transcendental. The Guru form is not material, that's what the Shastra said, but the Guru always wishes us that we see inside, who, who is the inside person. And by seeing this person inside, we can create this love for Guru. Love not for external, but for internal. This is what will be the, 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 the really uh, wonderful love, as Raghunanda does with Swami say, that this will be uh, something which will be forever, because this form is eternal, it is always in the spiritual world. So, and we always can have relationship with Guru in this form. The abode of Raja, a spiritual master, the the God of Raja. So everything we have come here in Raja, we, we can found in the Guru. Because this is an entrance. Like Guru is the entrance to the to real Raja. Raghunath Das Goswami does not speak about Raja which is we see outside. He speaks about Raja which is internal Raja. Raja Dham, which is uh, eternally exists here, but in a different dimension, in a different reality, this Raja always exists. So, Guru is the entrance, it's like a door to enter there. And then we can enter to that world, there is no other way. We can wander in around the Raj for hundreds and hundreds of years and trying to find the door inside. But Guru is the door. So, we should focus how to get Kripa, how to get mercy from Guru, so we can enter to that another world. Otherwise, what's the point to be around here? We can go in different places, Parikrama, and visit temples, but main uh, idea of visiting Raj is to meet a Sadhu, and I serve a Sadhu, a Guru, who is a Sadhu, we found them, we serve, so we can enter. He is the gatekeeper. He cannot open the gate 
to let us in. There is no other person there. We cannot go to somebody else. There's just single person which been sent by Krishna personally for each of us. And it could be a different guru. Because Samasti Guru is one, Nityananda. But Veshti Guru, we have a... Veshti means body. have different type, different Veshti Guru. So each Veshti Guru been sent to us very specifically, very personal. That this particular Veshti Guru will, will be uh, compatible to, to you, to, to, to help you to cross this, uh, this world and that world and enter to that another world. So, this is what is Raguna does, that's what I mean here. So, the people of Raja. So, we should uh, develop wonderful love for Guru, for Raj, people of Raja. Here we may see so many different But what Raghunath Das Goswami wants us to develop love for who is in the Raja, eternal Raja. We may respect everyone in this external Raja, but our association will be very specific to somebody who wants to enter to internal Raja. Because if you have an association with somebody who do not want to enter to that internal Raja, that will just deviate your mind and you will stuck in external Vraj and thinking that this is the only Vraj. The Vraja Dham is inside. So to enter inside we need a Guru and then we can develop love for spiritual beings who lives in that internal Vraj, the Vrajivasis. Our eight Sakis, Lalita, Vishaka, Chitra, Nanda Baba, Rishabhanu, Yashoda, the other Vrajabhasis we should develop our love and that may take very long time to get to know them. So that's why we have to inquire from our Guru Maharaj to have our spiritual identity and enter in this spiritual identity in the Vraj and develop relationship, develop the love. So it's, it's all said and develop. Means it will take time also to develop, to get to know someone in another world. Even in this world, you meet someone for first time, and then you think, oh, I need more time to know this person. Then you meet second time, third time, twenty time you meet. Maybe after ten years you can say, I know this person. It takes ten years to trust, meaning, like, long time relationship. Then you can really trust someone. So, it also takes time to develop relationship in that another world. The saintly devotee develops love and then he is saying, for whom? For spiritual master, for Raj Dham, for people of Raj and saintly devotee. Saintly devotee means who already followed the advice of Raghunath Das Goswami and always give up pride means a humble devotee. And what means the humble devotee? As somebody who have no desire but he follows the desire of his Guru. How you can find? Somebody may appear very humble. Like you meet someone and he's very humble. He is praising you. And, but you can only know the real humbleness if you see this devotee with his Guru. And if he inquire from the Guru instruction advice, and if devotee follows with great eagerness, I want to follow whatever it is, immediately, without thinking, maybe it's not good, maybe it's like this, maybe it's like that. Just desire to follow the advice of the Guru. This is love which is uh, entrance, it's an entry ticket to that world. So if we have this, this is, means humility. How, how humble you are in relation with Gurudev. This shows the first. Second, how humble you are 
with relation with your good brothers and good sisters. And how humble you are with everyone in this Rajdhan. So, but main is how this devotee in relation with the Guru. If he do something, Guru advise him this and no, no, Guru Maharaj, I don't want to do this. You know, I, I think it's, it's not good for me. So it means there is no humility there. It means this is not the saintly devotee. This is devotee which is growing and it's evolution, it's take time. So he is trying to say here, Raghunanda Swami, develop this love, develop the love for saintly devotee, for devotee who is actually have this relation with their guru and they are humble in this relationship. Otherwise, what will happen? You will get affected by a person who is doing his own things. He don't, may not care of what Guru he wants. So that will be a completely different thing. You will get this kind of mood. And that is very dangerous for spiritual life. Not to care of what Guru desires. So this association will be unfavorable for spiritual life. The saintly devotee is the brahmanas. We are seeing so many brahmanas. But who is a brahmana really? When time was Krishna's here, there was a brahmanas who is serving Krishna. They are together taking prasad like Madhumanga. Brahmanas, they love Krishna. That's how you can define who is a brahmana. And they are also humble. Why? Because they think that Krishna is uh, everything. They know. Brahman means who knows who is Krishna. That means Brahman. It doesn't mean he has a thread and he has a dress as a Brahman. That could be external. The Brahman is somebody who knows who is Krishna and he wants to have a relationship with him. My initiated mantra and develop love for my initiated mantra. This is mantra, it's Gayatri mantra, which we receive from the Guru. It is the, the song, the flute, the song which Krishna plays, and his flute comes to, to the Brahman, comes to Guru, Param Prabhupada, and enters in our ear when we hear from Guru, it enters in the ear, so we know that this is Shabda Brahman, this is not the ordinary words, it is Gayatri Mantra enters in us from Golok Vrindavan and it's planting the seed of Bhakti Lata in us which grows. So this initiated mantra it's planting the seed of Bhakti Lata, of, uh, of love. It needed to plant the seed that the tree will grow. If you don't plant the seed, nothing will grow. I asked my Guru Maharaj, if Bhakti Lata has to be planted or it's already there. He said, it has to be planted by Guru. And when he gives the Kaitrima, at that time he planted the Bhakti Lata. Then it's growing. And the Aparad is like big elephants, they destroying the Bhakti Lata all the time. The Sadhu Nida is the most dangerous one. And who is Sadhu? Anybody who has Kanchimala and Chant Hare Krishna, he is a Sadhu. He means everyone Sadhu. And offending anybody in the mind will be Sadhu Nida. And that will, it will be a big elephant which will destroy the Bhakti Lata. Then what's the point of everything? Having these elephants around, destroying the Bhakti Lata. It's a small plant, it's very small, growing very slowly. Need water, water is chanting, satsanga, this is the water. We are trying this Bhakti Lata growing slowly, slowly put some water. And then big elephant comes and smash everything. So we should try to stay from these big elephants. The holy name. Develop wonderful love for holy name. That's a very deep subject. Because how to develop love for somebody you not see. Like we know how to develop love for uh, uh, somebody in our life. Like in young age we meet someone and we fall in love. So this fall in love 
develop love is also like fall in love. But fall in love is holy name? How? I cannot see it. It's difficult. So, actually we need to understand that it is non-different. Holy name and Krishna. Holy name and Krishna. So, if you think Krishna and Radha is the holy name, so we can develop this love. When we chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. We can think, this is my relationship. You want to be with God, you chant His name, He is be right here, not going anywhere. Krishna said, when you say, Ra, Krishna already here. Ha, He's already here. Like now, if Shastra said, Ra, Ha, He's already here. Somewhere, I don't know, where he sit now, I don't know. <laughs> Here maybe, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like this, this just it. So, we can have a relationship, we cannot see it, but we can feel it. Until we have the, our eyes become transcendentalized, we cannot see. Because how we can see with these eyes? We cannot see. These eyes look in only five elements. These eyes cannot see Satchitananda. These eyes can see earth, water, fire, ether. We cannot see Satchitananda. And when we see, why I cannot see Krishna? Because this eye is not developed for this purpose. That's why. If this eye is, if you go doctor and say, and say can I see Satchitananda? The doctor will say, I don't even know what's that. We can see only what is made of five elements, we can see, but we cannot see Satchitananda. We cannot see Mahabhav, Radharani made of Mahabhav. So these eyes cannot see Mahabhav. They can see five elements. Mahabhav is something like other element. It, it is different element. There is no, in the, in the <laughs> physics, they don't put this element. They have like hundred something elements. They don't have the Mahabhav there. So we cannot see, we cannot find in microscope also. Is that Satchitananda or Mahabha? We cannot find these things. So science cannot see, eyes cannot see, microscope cannot see. So how we can see? We trust to Guru, Shraddha. We need Shraddha to see. If, we, if Guru says, Harinam is Radha Krishna, and we think, I trust my Guru, he knows what he's saying, means we trust, then immediately we think, okay, if I say Hare Krishna, Radha Krishna right here, because Hare is Radha, Krishna is Krishna. So, and we feel lonely sometimes. Why? Because we just don't trust the Guru. Because if we say, if we're lonely and we say Hare Krishna, we know that Krishna came already. So what's the loneliness about? It's just about our untrust. So we don't trust, so we become lonely. We think, I'm missing association of Radha Krishna. They are here in the name. So we can develop this love for the holy name. It means Raghunath Das Goswami said, develop this relationship and uh, re creating relationship also takes time. For them and for you. For Radha Krishna also takes time to create relation with us. In Raja they don't know about their gods. So they are you calling them. They come. And then what? The, the relationship should start, right? So if you are actually calling someone and he came, what do you do? Hello, how are you? Are you fine? How do you feel? What is happening to you? You are having a great relation. One time you meet someone and then maybe two times, three times, ten times. Then after maybe a, a hundred times you have very good relationship. Same thing with Radha Krishna, same thing with Holy Name. We chant one time and we sing, oh, they came, they are having relationship with me, I have a relation with them, I chant one more time. And then we chant hundred thousand times, they are thinking, oh, they call me so much, so must be something. If somebody call you, so, if somebody start calling you, your name, for a hundred thousand times, what do you think? No, either, yeah. <laughs> He's crazy in love, probably. If somebody calling 100,000 times somebody's name, 
<laughs> they must be really interested in this person, right? So Radha Krishna is saying, if they call in my name so many times, they must be very interested in me. But if we are calling the name and thinking, okay, I go get some sabji, then I have to cook, then I have to sleep, then uh, what else I have to do? Radha Krishna come because we call. And they come and sit. And then we do not even think about them. We think of other things. They are thinking, why did they call me? If they do not want to have any kind of association. Strange? <laughs> right? This Hare Krishna mantra, it means we are calling someone. Someone in someone. Gayatri mantra. What it means Gayatri mantra? Which we are chanting Gayatri mantra. It says, Swaha, come in. We are inviting. Come in. So when they come, what do we do? Do we have some kind of thinking about them? What, what is their... We, we may see how is Krishna is feeling right now. Do we ever ask how he feels? Maybe he is in separation, dying right now. He feels so bad. Maybe Radharani also feel like this, that she is in separation. Do we really care what do they feel? This is all about a care. So if we care, someone in trouble, we want to help. So if Radha Krishna is in separation, they are in trouble, they cannot meet. They want help. That's why they came as Mahaprabhu. They came and they want some help from us. That's how, how it is. We can help someone that great. If we are going through Guru, we will have that option. So, love for holy name. So it is a person. It is not some kind of just sound. It's coming when you call him. You can't see it, but it doesn't matter, it's there. They are coming, they are there. It's invisible because our eyes simply cannot see. Our eyes cannot see so many things. Like our eyes cannot see atoms, protons, electrons. It doesn't mean it's not there, right? How we know it's there? We believe uh, a scientist. But how we know that they're really found out that this is there? Oh, they have a microscope. But there is no microscope to see Radharani and Krishna. So we have to trust to some other scientists. And the, some other scientists is the Guru, is the Vaishnavas. They are the scientists. And they said, look, in every atom there is electron and photon. So we trust that to the physics, to the science. And Guru is another science. It's a, it's a Vedic science. It's a science. Very, very very advanced science. In Srimad Bhagavatam there is written about uh, this science which is only maybe 50 years ago was found out. So it is a science and a guru who is he? He is a scientist and the scientist says Radha Krishna in the name. So do you believe the scientist or not? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Do we believe in this science and do we believe in this particular scientist or not? If we do believe, if we say Hare Krishna means Radha Krishna is right here, so the relationship starts. Then one lakh of mantra will be lots of relationship. If you take this as a relationship, chanting Hare name, uh, Hare name will be a, uh, a developing relationship process, not just repeating the words. That you can take very long, 20-30 years you can repeat the words. It will clean the heart for some. Namabhasa is also nice. You are, you are developing, you are slowly. But if you want to have a, a, some real results, this is the way how to have results. That we think the holy name is the person. And we develop the love for this person. The holy name of Krishna and the shelter of Eternally youthful couple of Raja, Sri Radha Krishna. Holy name is Radha Krishna, and we develop love for Radha Krishna when we are meditating on their lilas. It is also process, it is also a development of a relationship. When we know our spiritual identity, we go there and we serve to Radha Krishna. In our spiritual identity, we can serve to Radha Krishna, we can uh, make a garland. 
and then you bring to Radharani. And Radharani puts on Krishna and say thank you. She won't say thank you. She won't say Radha Radha either. <laughs> it will be something else. She may say Krishna. <laughs> or Danyavat. In bridge bus. She will say in bridge bus something to great. To, as a, as a, as a, she may give a reward. A earrings. Or something. So this is a relationship. So it is, has to be developed, it takes time. Like with everyone takes years, with them also it takes years. They should trust you slowly, slowly. You should trust them slowly, slowly. First try, then trust. It works in both worlds. In this world, you should try the person first. See what he'll do. What is the agenda? What is the desires? What is the selfless, selfish? You have to try. Then you trust. Same thing, Radha Krishna, they train us. They see maybe you have some desires, you know, doing this or doing that. So they're not going to push it. They're going to wait when we have no desires, only them. So they are testing us and trying us. And we are testing them, we're trying them. We don't know who they are. We know what is body of five elements. But we don't know what is Chitananda body or what is about body. We don't know how to relate to this type of body. This is a different types of form. It's a form of life. It's a different form of life. It's not even material form of life. We have 8,400,000 forms of material form of life. 400,000 forms of human form of life. Radha Krishna doesn't belong to this form of life. They are different form of life. They live on a different planet. Goloka. It's called. So they are different. So it takes more time to create relationship because they are different. They are thinking differently. We are thinking to get something for ourselves. Rather, any thinking to get something for Krishna. All the time. So this is a different thinking. So when we create this relationship, we should start thinking how they thinking. Then we actually can start have the relationship. Because if we start thinking, I want something for myself, they, they wouldn't understand us. This is not their language. Their language is selfless love. Our language is selfish love. It's a two different languages. It's a two different vibrations. So this vibration, if it's not going to match, you're not going to even get there because your vibration doesn't match. So you can get to them if you have the similar vibration. And the similar vibration is giving yourself for others, selfless love. So this is a similar vibration which, which Radha Krishna they expecting us to have in the relationship. Radha, this is all what is Raghunanda Swami was saying in Manak Shiksha. And uh, I'm sorry if I make any mistakes. My Dandavas to all of you. If you have any questions, I would be glad to answer. Or anything you can add. That verse comes to mind, uh, Premanjana Churita Bhakti Galochanina, um, when the eyes are smeared with the tinge of the salve of love. Yes. So what is that salve of love? Um, it is also in Priyam Bhakti it says that Guru he is like putting medicine on our eyes. So we are blind, like we have glasses, so we are blind, we, we cannot see it. So he put the medicine. It takes time because eyes cannot see, so it will take long time to put medicine. So slowly, slowly we start seeing something. So when we see what Guru Maharaj is saying, then we can start seeing. When Guru Dev saying white is white, black is black, we start seeing the world through the eyes of the Guru. This is how we can see. The Shastra may say something, but we should come to Guru and say, Guru Maharaj, the Shastra say this, how I should understand what it says? And my Guru said, you should understand uh, this shloka, this particular way, then our eyes start opening. 
if we read something somewhere and we don't ask Guru how to understand that, we think, I understood everything, it's so clear here, everything is so clear. Means we don't want to be taking this medicine. So slowly, slowly, Guru, he applied the medicine by giving us an answer to questions. So if we want to have here some medicine, we should ask questions. How to understand something. If we don't ask question, means we don't ask for medicine. If we don't ask for medicine, Guru won't give it, then we'll be blind. And we'll be reading Shastras day and night, and teaching others maybe also, but we'll still be blind. Because the only way how we can get knowledge is through the Guru. O oh mind, O oh brother, I hold your feet and I pray to you with the flattering words. Always give up your pride and develop wonderful love for your spiritual master, the abode of Raja, the people of Raja, the saintly devotees, the Brahmanas, my initiated mantra, the holy name of Krishna, and the shelter of eternally youthful couple of Raja, Sri Sri Radha Krishna. It is very loaded verse, lots of things I hear. So that's why I uh, today was some change and uh, the decision was made to um, give a lecture on Stavali Manak Shiksha. It's just come like this and it seems to be very appropriate timing also for that. So because we are starting our spiritual life. This is what we should start with, the Manak Shiksha, is that this is our Goswamis, this is Rati and Tulsi Manjari. Raghunanda Goswami is a, is a uh, Rati Manjari, is a very, very close to Radharani. So we should learn how he get there, how the relationship starts. He started from Manak Shiksha. So we should start from that, because the, the, the way how to get into that world, they are showing by the example. But if we think, oh, we go into 